further ado, we're going to be uh, moving on to our, our final project for you this evening, uh, courtesy of uh, Team Turbo Hamster. Uh, Ian, when you're ready. Okay. Cool. Hi, everybody. Thanks for waiting for us. Uh, I'd like to introduce Team Turbo Hamster's project, Hamster Help. I'm Ian. You'll get to know the rest of the team as we go on. We've got Adrian, we've got Matthew, and we've got Jack. We were inspired by the help desk we were given to take us through the course and by the advice we were given, which was that we were our own best resource for knowledge. And we decided to make a, a help desk application. Uh, we wanted to make it multi-role. Uh, we wanted to make it a progressive web app so it could be used on any platform. And we wanted to make it ticket-based. We wanted to focus on live updates, fresh information, and a visual aspect to it. Um, and also, we wanted to be able to bring in that peer-to-peer -peer support on the tickets, as well as a student to mentor. Uh, you'll see all this in action now as Adrian takes you through a demo of the app. So here we can see two versions of our app. One is the desktop version on the left, and one is the mobile version on the right. We can register by default as a student, but we can register as a tutor as well. For now, we're going to use some predefined accounts. On the right, we're going to log in with a student. And on the left, we're going to log in with a tutor, just so we can demonstrate the interaction between each other. Here we can see the home screen for both users. The, the student has, it's, it's a slightly different because he can create a ticket. But if we go on the queue, we're going to see a slightly different as well because the student can create private tickets where only the owner of the ticket can see it or a tutor as well. Now with the tutor, now with the student, we can go and create a new ticket. We can add a title for the ticket. some body text. We can also add tags for the ticket. Also can upload files. We can make a gallery. Also, we can choose to be private or public. When we create the ticket, we can see on the left side of the screen, we can see it's getting updated live for the tutor can see, to see. And uh, all the tickets created by users will be updated updated live on the queue page. Now, if we go on the on the ticket with the tutor, we can see the ticket and uh, we can check the tags to see if there are any similar tickets with the same tag. Maybe we can find some similar problem from other users. Also, if we go go back and we can visit the user profile, we can see all the previous tickets he had or the current tickets open. Now we can, we can try to solve this problem. We can read the text. We can open images and see what was the problem. Also, we have an instant messaging system where we can send the student a message and he will get updated instantly. Don't need to refresh. Uh, this, this feature is very useful because if the ticket is public, uh, all the user can come together and help each other together. Don't need to wait for a tutor in particular. But now we fixed the problem. We can close the ticket or reopen. But for now, we can leave it as closed because it's fixed. We can go back to the queue page. And the ticket is gone. It's fixed. We can go carry on with the next ticket. Also, we have dog mode. But that's it. We can sign out. And this was our demo, and I will send, I will pass you to Matthew to talk more about the technologies we've been using so far. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, as the basic starting point, we went with the the classic MERN stack, so MongoDB, Express, React, and now JS. All those technologies all speak JSON, so that removes any additional languages like SQL from the equation. MongoDB is, is a bit of a mindset shift to go with because it's designed to have a single document that contains everything you need to create a page in a web app. So, for example, our ticket model also contains the comments rather than just being in a separate table. Um, MongoDB doesn't have any schema enforcement on it, which means that it's very easy to change things 
as the app developed over a very short space of time. And also, um, but we still wanted the safety of having some sort of schema. So we use a library called Mongoose, which wraps a schema around MongoDB and ensures that we're putting the data we expect into the database. Um, for providing our real-time functionality, we uh, went with Socket.io. This is a library that sort of wraps around uh, web sockets and long polling and gives you two-way communication between client and server rather than just a so classic request response. Um, in addition to that, it also gives you chat rooms, which are enforced on the server and allows you to send data just to the clients who need that data rather than to everybody, which is particularly important for private tickets because you don't want to send private messages to everybody. Um, then because we had several separate apps running, so we had an Express API, we have our front end, and then we have our live system provided by Socket.io, we needed a way to ensure that we were authenticated between all of those. For the technology for that, we used is JSON web tokens. So they are signed with a private key and then verified with a public key, meaning that only our system could issue a valid token, but any system, even the front end, can verify that that token is valid. And then we know that someone's logged in without having a single authentication system. That is a single point of failure. And finally, because again, we have lots of different systems interacting with each other, we need to make sure that every time we were pushing something onto that main branch, it definitely worked as we expected. So by implementing GitHub Actions, we had a testing phase. If the testing phase was passed, our code was then pushed up to our Heroku app, uh, ready to run. And if it didn't pass the test, we get a notification and we knew there was something wrong and we could go and fix it. Now I'll pass you back to Ian to talk about some of our challenges. Thanks, Matthew. Yeah, we, uh, we encountered a few challenges. I think the first one was coordinating a large group. This was the first project we'd done in anything more than a pair. Uh, communication was key, um, but I think on top of that, using the Kanban boards on Trello to keep track of what everyone was doing, where they got with it was invaluable. Uh, we all work remotely. This is the first time we've ever met, ever. Um, and for that, we found the huddle on Slack to be a fantastic feature. Um, for those of you who don't know, it's a, a direct messaging, voice messaging um, ability built into Slack. You can share screens and it's almost, it's always available. You can just drop in and drop out. And it's almost like, as it suggests, getting a huddle around a desk to go, can you help with this problem? And we instantly got everyone on there with a full pool of knowledge. Uh, got us out a few scrapes a few times. Uh, the styling, uh, we spiked um, MUI and Tailwinds. Uh, we found them both a fairly steep learning curve. Um, all we'd really used was uh, vanilla CSS previously. Um, we decided to go with MUI. Uh, we found it an incremental increase in what we were putting on the app at any one time was a lot easier with MUI. And the amount of docs available for that, um, community resources, tutorials on YouTube was just fantastic. And the final one, uh, the biggest test I think we had was testing Socket.io. We were heavily TDD driven. We were heavily TDD. So we had everything tested on its way up. And testing Socket.io is difficult. And yes, I'm going to read most of this, I'm afraid. It is uh, it's very difficult because it works in callbacks. The way we got it working was to wrap <laughs> all of it in promises, uh, which then we used the race method to evaluate which promise was completed. Um, it was very complex, it took us quite a bit of time, but yeah, those huddles came in handy for that one. Um, I'm gonna pass you on to Jack now for where we would like to take the app, things that we had integrated, and he'll take that. Uh, so, uh, we took on a lot. Um, we uh, always kept an eye on the uh, MVP, but we were designing from the beginning to be expandable and to, uh, you know, uh, spread out as time went on. Um, we had, we're happy with what we got, but definitely there were more things we could have done if we had just a little more time. Um, we have the infrastructure in place already to put in a, a ticket archive for any completed tickets. So you could look back at what other, while you're waiting for the tutor to go around to you, you can look at back at what other people have done. Um, what solutions they found to their problems. Uh, we were, we would be a relatively simple addition to add um, custom uh, tag sets for uh, 
uh, you know, so um, that uh, the customer could, could change the tags uh, that they could attach to the tickets and therefore make it uh, both slightly more future-proof and also um, uh, make it basically applicable to any remote learning system rather than necessarily uh, coding-based uh, as the, the one we've installed. Um, slightly further down, we wanted to set up a, a chat room, a private chat room between the student and the tutor, which would then summon the, the student into it so they could have a, a dialogue about the problem rather than it just being out in the, on the ticket. Um, would have been a bit more work, but it, it was we're on the way with that one. Uh, multimedia integration we also put aside. We were going to do Zoom. We were going to do voice recording. So if you wanted to kind of talk out the problem because you're having trouble putting it into words, um, it got put aside because of time. But again, a few more days maybe. <laughs> um, but anyway, from from the beginning, we were thinking in terms of microservice uh, microservice service structure and because of the JSON web tokens, it was always built with the premise of being expandable and and grow as time went on. Um, any questions? Well, well done. Amazing. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much indeed. Uh,